his achievements yeah. recommend that we great. Yeah, like the, the core principle of a game, the core like uh, look at Canvas novel or the old trigger novel. We didn't have any of those. Yeah, me, and we didn't have like the structure of how will the fundamental, like you said, the groups, how would they work, or how would this what work the, for the four archetypes and so on. Yeah, what does the player do? How do they engage? It was just points. Points. <laughs> And and we that sometimes the the community calls that pointsification, mm -hmm. right? Where you're just adding points and badges and leaderboards is pointsification because you're not using kind of that those deeper principles of games. You are just throwing points at stuff. Yeah. Um, and and yet it's called gamification. And so all the full range of everything from um, let's just add some points through to really well crafted games all get called the same thing. And so they all get lumped into the same category, and so they all get, you know, yeah, they all become shit. It's but there you go. That whole gamer gate's a bit like that, jumping all people who think there should be ethics and gamerism as being misogynist assholes. And so, yeah, there are some, but not everybody. <laughs> and you know, it's like white um, heterosexual men are the devil because <laughs> we're all terrible and mean and nasty and hate everybody and yeah so you know some of us are but some of us aren't <laughs> so yeah um but no, the hype cycle is very useful it's a guide and you can look at, at it being different in different subpopulations as you said um qr codes in japan were done well and in europe were done badly so different different populations have have different um acceptance of different types of technology but it's useful to kind of look at these sort of things and see where you might sit. So, um, unfortunately, the stuff that I'm interested in and I do is all on the way out. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm on the down curve to disillusionment is most of what I do. Right? So, so mobile health monitoring, um, augmented reality, gamification. Um, I don't do these ones. But um, yeah, where virtual reality here. Um, so you know the stuff. Jesse the stuff we do, Jesse control. Yeah, like I've got that. The, the lead motion, Jesse control stuff. Um, basically, I'm sorry. All of my stuff is now in the trough of disillusionment. So I'm fighting. Yeah, um, but I'm the, these other things. I'm human augmentation. Um, I, a BCI. I don't know why brain computer interfaces are there because you know the epoch came out an age ago and we were doing BCI then. And so, yeah, as of, that's as of July 2014. It's a hype cycle, right? It's, it's, it's cycle. not a technology cycle, it's no. just when the hype happens and when the hype it wears off. Yeah. So, yeah. where is Half Life 3 on this group? <laughs> <laughs> Half Life 3? Uh, well, it's, actually, um, we, we did discuss. Um, uh, with Stuart, he was saying that we needed one for games, mm. right? We needed a game hype cycle, mm. right? So, so we did like Destiny. We're we're Destiny in here because, like, usually you hit the peak of your hype before release, right? And so release happens pretty much just as it goes after peak of, of inflated expectations. That second line there, that's release date, and then whoosh, everybody thinks it's crap. Yeah, he's not buying and go, wait a minute, you promised me that this was going to be a unicorn that I could ride, and yet it's a horse with a carrot stuck to its head. But then uh, the whole plot of it would be really, really long tail, but that would be nostalgia, would it? There'll be some nostalgia, like you could get some nostalgia going on in the end. Yeah, but like, like buy games, crap games, mm -hmm. it goes into the bottom, and then it takes like 10 years, and then it starts to run. <laughs> Depends on the game, yeah. Um, so yeah, but no, you could you could look at these for different different gaming systems or gaming technologies and things, right? So so and, and there is generally a bit of this this balancing act going on. Some things never reach the plateau of productivity, right? Some things just die because they are actually bad, right? Uh, and some things happen without much hype to them, and then suddenly they're massive, right? Like Facebook, there wasn't really a peak of inflated expectations for Facebook. It just happened. It was kind of word of mouth, so it wasn't like anybody pushed it and said, hey, there's this system coming 
and you're going to be able to be social on it. And you guys will think, ooh, I'm really waiting for Facebook to come. But in retrospect, you have it for the whole social network genre would be on this curve. Social network, so well, social network games, social networking. Well, like social network platforms. Platform as as a solution to business, yeah, like everything. Yeah. And everything. Well, I mean, as as soon as the computers got connected by internet, you had chat rooms and you had social networking. It's not something invented halfway through, right? Yeah, okay, but like the marketing you, approach of social networking. Yeah, you, marketing you, and, social, and social networking in marketing as a this is going to be sell everything. Businesses do lots of money into it and say that you know they've got the same business fundamentals, so their business operates the way it always did. Because geeks yeah. hang out on IRC for years and there is no still. business and still hang out and socialize there. Yeah, but then it didn't have the label social network. network. It was just people chatting together. Yeah. And then it got the whole social network label like in 2008, 2006 yeah. and so, maybe. And so this is also interesting for serious games when we talk about labeling things, right? What you label as a game. As a game. Um, for... Me, I, I, at Otago, I tried to create a master's in game development, right? And the uh, administration said, no, we can't, we can't have a master's of game in the title. That, that would be silly. Um, it can't, can't you call it something more scientific -y? Um, like, yeah, and I said, well, of course I could call it, like, you know, interactive um, entertainment systems, right? So you get a master's degree in interactive entertainment. Which you know is a game because it's interactive thing, but and they they preferred that title, and I said, well, no, I'm I'm not. Uh, if I'm going to make a, a master's course on games, it's going to have games in the title. I'm not going to hide the what it is just to satisfy some academics in their sixties, right? Because that's for me not relevant, right? So I I, I didn't do it there, right? But I. Did it in Norway with a smaller university. Um, so yeah, and and they were more flexible, and I could carry more weight rather than being at twenty five thousand student university or three thousand student university. You've got a bit more flexibility. That naming is is actually quite interesting. It's quite interesting from a marketing perspective. Branding naming massive issue uh, for gamification. It's causing problems because people can name anything they do as game, right? So this this kind of you know pointing some points on an avatar, you call it a game. You know? Adding a wee bit of feedback, call it a game. You know? Again, adding a wee bit of stuff, call it a game, hey, it's a game. Um, there's no quality control over it. You know? And that's what you guys will find when you go looking for papers. Quality control is a big problem. And certainly for academics working in this area, because we're academics, we've received... Okay, so games are incredibly brutal development area. Right? Only the very best games actually make it to market, and still a lot of them aren't very good. Right? But you should have seen the games that didn't make it to market <laughs> and how terrible those were. Right? So almost every game ever thought of is an absolutely terrible game. Right? So what you do is you start with a million ideas, most of which are terrible. And you tell someone else about your idea, and most of the time they say that's a shit game, and so you don't go into it. And you keep, and then the couple of you think it's a good idea, and you pitch it to some, to it, and you try and actually write it down as a game concept. Most of the time, you then go well. If that did work, then you get some kind of green light to start trying to prototype something. So you do something over a weekend, try and get something working, and most of the time it's not good. Um, and you keep doing this, and you keep killing projects, right? So you make game, you, you have game ideas, you can get concepts, and you get prototypes, and you get then do some game development, and eventually, out of those, well, probably ten thousand ideas, you get two or three actual games that go into production, right? That actually get released, right? Out of ten games that go into production, you might get two that get released. Right? A lot of games get start to be made. Either the team doesn't work, game idea doesn't work, it just becomes shit, and they just throw it away. Okay? In serious games, you receive funding from someone to make a game. And they don't pull funding halfway through the project. Okay? Um, I actually had this discussion with the Inland Film Fund. Um, there was a Norwegian film being made, 
and they had they had applied for funding and they'd got um, seven million krona funding, right, to make this movie. And they'd got like five million private funding as well. Right? So they got money from the government, money from private and from, from private investors to make this movie. They'd spent two million krona on production and getting everything set up and realized that no, this is a shitty movie. Right? This movie is not going to ever be a good movie. No one's going to watch it. Right? Because they'd run, they'd got the initial scripts, the script up, and they'd, they'd started doing some, some shots of it, and they'd gone out to potential audience and shown some of the content, and none, no one was interested. So they went to the, the, the film fund and said, look, okay, we spent two million, but we've still got five million of the seven million you gave us. Can we give that back to you and say, sorry, this is going to be a shit movie. And they said, no. You either give us back the full seven million, or you make a movie. And they said, but it's not going to be good. So they said, no, no, no. We didn't say make a good movie. We said make a movie. So they spent the seven million krona, and they spent the private investors five million krona, and they made a shit movie, and no one went to it. Because, you know, a government organization had a flight funding, and there's no model for cost recovery, so they didn't kill the project halfway through, so the project still got made. Serious games. I come to you, and I say, this, if you guys go out with your masters and, you, and a company comes to you and says, hey, um, we've got this problem, we want you to make a serious game for us to um, help sell coffins. No, we've got a problem, people aren't buying coffins. Um, they're not buying expensive coffins, they're buying really cheap coffins. We want people to make a game about buying more expensive coffins. Pick one that's, <laughs> Picking one that's very unlikely to actually happen. Um, I, I, I can pick one I have been um, approaching, which is the water quality board in, um, who run most of the water quality in Norway on a game to teach people how to use water more effectively. Uh, because they're worried, you know, there's only a limited amount of fresh water, it costs money to purify it, it costs money to pump it to your house, so you shouldn't just turn it on and leave it running. So how do we teach people to use water better? Um, now, when you're approached like that, you've then got like, how do you make the game? What, what's, what's, the, what's your objective? How do you use the money? When do you kill the project? Now, if they come to you with you know, a million credits, and say, make this game for us. And you, you spend a couple of months working on it, and you go, look, there is no way we can find of making this going, game interesting. We can make a game out of it, but it's not going to work. If you were a very, very ethical person, you would go to them and say, well, here's 800,000 krona back. Sorry, we fucked up. But... Usually, <laughs> what happens here is, you know, you go into kind of zombie development, right? Where the product is dead. You know it's dead. You know the game is shit. You know it's never going to be fun. But someone's kept it, keeping it alive with funding other than making a good game. And so the project marches through to the end and is released as a dead game, right? Because the developers making it knew it was going to fail and knew it was going to be a shit game, and knew nobody would get it. Academics do the same thing, right? They, get the, they, they, they have to get a publication out. Right? You publish or you perish. So they make a shit game, they test it, they try and find any damn way they can to get something statistically significant out of their results, and publish it. Because right? it doesn't actually matter if the game's good or not. If they get a publication out, they get their points, their, their university is happy, they can move on. And then they can salami it. And then they salami it to slice it up and do as many small publications as they can to try and get as many points because they're gaming the system. Right? Publication points are a game. And so we play the, you play that game. Right? And you can play that game in various ways. In Norway, they have a two tier point system where you kind of, you know, depending on what you publish and, and stuff, you get different forms of the points, and so you target different publications. And, and, you know, if you're playing the game hard out and trying to get published, one of the things you do is if you're going to try and get published in a journal, 
you cite articles published in that journal previously. Okay? And depending on journal, you'll probably take around, if you can get up to about 25% of your citation coming out of the journal you're trying to be published in, you're more likely to get accepted. Okay? Because, you know, the people who are reviewing that publication probably are people engaged in that publication in some way and have probably published it. Their knowledge of the field will be related to that publication, which means when they say, has this person shown the, the context of the field, they see that you're, publish, you're, you're referencing papers they would reference and go, yes, they are. All right? so, rather, so strategically what you do is you pick publications and you swap out some of your citations for citations from that publication. That's, that's the, the method that the journal of the student book has. Yes. So, <laughs> of the what? The, the journal of impact. impact. It's journal has an impact factor. So it's kind of like an index of uh, quality, qualitative assessment. So, so all journals have this thing called an impact factor, which is the number of times they're cited. Right. Oh, yeah. Right? So if you so it's good for a publisher to be, or it's good for a journal to have their all their articles, articles cited reference the journal. Yeah. Yes, because you then help them get more points, and so by making sure that your publication helps the journal get more points, they can be more favourable towards yours because you're not giving your citation points to other journals. <laughs> It is so much like link farming. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you should also be very worried when you start find a paper where more than half of the references are to the author. No? Self-citation. So self-citation. Uh, and the actual anti, the anti-violence, um, the in games. So uh, Anderson. Right. So. Um, one of the prominent um, C.A. Anderson um, cited 1,600 times, mm -hmm. right? You know, you know, he's getting a lot of citations. Um, uh, this guy is one of the, the big uh, detractors for, or he, he said, you know, violent video games are going to destroy the world. Um, so, uh, and, and so he's very strongly um, defeated violent video games on aggressive behavior, aggressive cognition, aggressive affect, psychological arousal, and pro-social. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and you know, he does things like, me, like do you, will you pop a balloon um, after playing a game? But, you know, he also <laughs> finds, that, you know, games like Myst, which is very slow-paced image when you kind of puzzle, versus Doom. <laughs> Doom makes you more psychologically aroused. Surprise, surprise. And you know, psychological arousal is connected with violence, right? Because you know, if you're excited, you're more likely to be violent than if you're completely calm. So actually, I had a discussion on Epic Scientific and Story with Koda about that in regards to whether or not it eases or increases the aggression and violence against the power of violence. Because my argument is that if you're more uh, violent, it won't have any effect. Whereas if you get um, ag aggression released uh, by playing it, it works uh, in a positive way because you get out that anger by shooting it's, at that, the... That's called catharsis, right? <laughs> so there's an argument about catharsis. So one of the things here, okay, so, so Anderson, 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 Anderson. Um, so the first, the first block, and if you have a look, it's, it's, it's um, Anderson and Bushman, and Derissa and Bill, and you can see uh, oh, Buckman, so Anderson and it is Bushman, and is there Anderson and Buckman? Um, there is a Bushman over here, so that's one of the guys he publishes with, um, and yeah, Husselman is another one. Um, so you see here, here, this is an, uh, Husselman and Anderson, this is another one of his colleagues. So you can count, so what you do is you go through and count all of the citations that come from his lab, and there's an update for Bushman and Wang, um, basically his kind of group of three colleagues, and you start getting up to kind of a large percentage of their citations are for themselves. Right? 
this is good, it increases your citation count. Right? So in terms of the gaming of the system, that's effective gaming of the publication system. Okay? But you know, it also means that you're not necessarily having an argument that is broadly accepted. Right? So you can't be relying on, look, look, I've done all these citations. This argument is well founded. No, no, no. It's you, just in multiple publications constantly talking about it. Right? That doesn't make a breadth of, of rich breadth. Could also be your cited for being wrong. Yeah. Yeah, actually, in my PhD, there was one particular paper that I I didn't want to cite because it was so bad, right? But I, I wanted to cite them. So I, could, like, I wanted to say, this is how not to do it. This is a terrible way of doing this experiment. But I didn't want to give them the points <laughs> of saying they got cited. Like, you're actually citing them, right? So I wanted to have, like, you know, unlike. <laughs> it's not, I didn't, it's not, that I, it's not that I wanted to like it. It's like, you know, when someone... Yeah, like uh, someone talking about one of our colleagues, um, their three-month-old baby died. Right? And, you know, she had a post about it. You don't like that shit, right? Someone posts that their baby's died. You can't, on Facebook, you can't like that. So how do you, like, how do you throw sympathy, right? You, you want to acknowledge it, but you don't want to like it. That's not how that works. Right, so the, the yeah. word to, you often have that situation. So some someone posts a thing which you which is against something, and you totally agree with it, but you don't like the theme, right? Yeah, you, you, you don't like it's the like you say theme. like. It's like what do you mean you like that? I like, like that you don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it gets <laughs> yeah. kind of confusing sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, so this is this is one of those areas where you have to be watchful of all of these citations. How many are to him and his colleagues, and how many are to other people? No? Um, and yeah, no, he did, did yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I, we could discuss violence in video game for a long time. He's one of the detractors and he's a bit crazy. Um, so, so yeah, um, for the high cycle, um, and now we need to take a break for 15 minutes. Um, now, I want to, what I want to.